Hi everyone. Uh, this is great. Thank you very much, David and others, for organizing this. This is basically the best scientific and non-scientific event that I've ever been to. I tell you why in a minute. But uh, this is my Twitter handle, and this is the official hashtag uh, of this talk. Please tweet about it. Um, as I as I was saying, this is great uh, for many different reasons. First of all, as a kid, I always wanted to become a stand-up comedian, and it was okay. My parents were okay with it. My my teachers encouraged me. The only problem was that I wasn't funny. Uh, well, this is me dreaming of becoming a stand-up comedian. So I decided to become a professor because as a teacher, it doesn't matter how tasteless your jokes are, kids laugh at you anyway because they are polite. And this is, again, uh, great because it gives me the opportunity to kind of make my dreams come true. So please keep laughing at my not very interesting jokes. The other reason, um, I did this thing last year too, and uh, my topic last year was about p-value. And uh, it, it was great scientifically, and it had a very great impact on my work. We wrote a paper later based on the presentation, which was published uh, early March, just three days after that, the American Society for Statistics basically wrote the same paper. This is the greatest impact we can imagine, and then, just three weeks ago, John Oliver, the, the British comedian, talked about uh, p-hacking. This is not facking, uh, this is p-hacking. If you don't know the difference, read our paper. Uh, and then finally, well, it wasn't all good. Uh, I lost last year. I got the second rank and I lost to Bob West. Is he here? Well, he's depicted in this picture. Uh, I lost to him and it was really painful, not because losing is painful, but well, I was going to make a joke about German humor here, but I'm a bit intimidated. Anyway, it was difficult to, to lose to Bob West, who is German, anyway. Um, I, I went through a very deep depression because just losing to him, my girlfriend left me, not because I was depressed, just because I was lost, I, I lost to Bob West. As a matter of fact, my ex-girlfriend is not dating Bob West. Yes, yes, Bob, she is my ex. She hasn't told you, has she? Anyway, um, so I was depressed and I was seeking for love. And uh, you know, this, these days the best thing to find love is... Tinder! Tinder! <laughs> who, who, who doesn't... Who is single in a room? Raise your hand if you are single. Raise your hand if you are single and you are on Tinder. Oh my god, you liars. <laughs> Raise your hand if you're not single but still on Tinder. <laughs> you, you all lie. So anyway, uh, I suppose you all know what Tinder is, and for those who pretend that they don't know what Tinder is, it's very simple. You get some pictures, some very short descriptions. If you like it, you swipe right. If you don't like it, you swipe left. If both sides, uh, imagine it's a heterosexual couple, swipe right, they get matched. Oops, sorry. And then, oh, I went too quickly. So, and if they get matched, then they can talk to each other. They can basically text, uh, send text messages to each other. Uh, for example, here, uh, Alison and uh, who? Someone else got matched, and Alison says, Hey, John, can't believe we have 20 fun, 21 friends in common, but have never met. And then John says, Hi, Alison, I know, that's crazy. Why do you meet Jessica? Well, total douchebag, as you can see, but. <laughs> Anyway, these guys you know, can talk and talk and then exchange phone number and then basically they meet up and then uh, they might end up, you know, uh, doing whatever and then they marry, etc, etc. So, uh, I, I decided to do Tinder, but as a professor in Oxford it's a bit tricky because there are students around you don't want to lose your reputation uh, being on Tinder. So I had to come up with a good excuse and at the time, um, uh, I had a student, but before that, I, I also discovered there is something called tender, which is just a piece of meat connected to an electronic meal, which rotates and slaps your phone, so it swipes right for you. You can just set it up and then go to your business and come back and you get a lot of matches. So I had this, uh, but then I, I needed someone to help me and I also needed a cover story. So I talked to Jenny, my MS student at the time, who works for Uber now. She's not a driver. Uh, I mean, she wanted to become a big Uber driver, but she drinks a lot, as shown in this picture, this is Jenny, so she could not drive, 
So they suggested her to become a data scientist uh, at Uber. So this is what she does now. She was desperate too for love. So we, we started this project. We uh, started data collection. Basically, we dated people, we slept with people, and it was exhausting, believe me. <laughs> well, this was after a week of data collection. So we decided to change our uh, strategy. So we, we asked, not Tinder, I'm not sure. I'm not allowed to tell you what company, really, this is serious. Uh, but we made a deal with a company which runs these applications and we got data from them. We got uh, data on 400,000 different couples, the conversations that they have over two years. We didn't have the content of the conversations. That would have been amazing. I would have been so rich if I had that. We only had metadata, like the length of the messages, the number of messages, the, com the timings, whether there is a question mark in the message, whether there is a phone number, etc., etc. So we analyzed this data, and I'm going to tell you very quickly what we found. First of all, reciprocity. Well, here someone got matched, and then he or she says, you're actually perfect, and uh, this is 9 p.m., and no response, and then 2 p.m. Uh, next day, it says, like, to be honest, even the way you ignored me, ignored my message was also perfect. <laughs> and this happens all the time. Uh, I have another example. Hey, on 19th of January, hi, hi, hey, and this is 3rd of February, hi. Eventually the other person says, persistence is key, and then the first person says, hi. So basically only about half of the mess conversations never get reciprocated. So it's not only you, don't worry. Half of the cases, no response at all. And in 40% 40 40 of cases, there is only one uh, response. Um, let's move on. Uh, this is the length of conversation. Uh, most of the conversation have less than 20 messages in them. In them, it's very short. Hi, how are you? Is already two messages. Uh, most of the conversations uh, have very short words. I move on, and the length in time is also not that quick. Uh, most of the conversations happen between two days to one week. So there will be about 20 messages, typically uh, transferred about four to eight days. This is a very slow paced type of conversation. It's not like texting or emailing. Um, okay, men initiate more messages. It's quite surprising because uh, females and males got matched and they can initiate, but it's still 80%, 83% of cases male initiate. In those cases that female initiates the conversation, there is less chance of reciprocation. And this is, again, uh, quite interesting because you might think, oh, this is a very modern product, but it's still quite male dominant. I move on. Um, female use many more question marks, and men ask many more questions. Um, okay. Um, thank you. Thank you.